Today we are taking a look at the Air Venturi Rail Lock Spring Compressor. And the Rail Lock is new, well it's been out a while now, but it is different in that older spring compressors required a very long board to support the entire action and barrel. And of course they took up a lot of space in your shop. Uh, one of the things they've done with this is given it the ability to clamp onto a scope rail, which tends to be present on most spring guns today and then having clamped onto that rail we can go ahead and use the compressor to um, release the tension on the spring slowly remove it from the gun and then when we go to put the gun back together we can compress the spring using this and we don't have a chance for the spring to get away and um, damage something or hurt someone. So we're going to go ahead and see how we use this. It does come in a box along with a couple of Allen keys which are used to make the adjustments and it looks like we have some instructions here on how we go about using it. Uh, Alright, we'll go ahead and take a look at the manual and um, get everything set up to use properly. Got our parts list so that we know we have everything. Uh, goes through nomenclature and then goes ahead and starts to give us an idea of how to actually use that. Well, I will read that offline. We will go ahead and get a rifle out that we can pull the uh, compression tube in action. Actually, we had a project a while ago that led us to, um, a number of years ago actually, to cut up a gamma recon. Um, one of the things we were doing is demonstrating that in your typical spring gun, the barrel length is there to give you cocking advantage and not to increase velocity as it is in a PCP or CO2 or pneumatic gun. Uh, in the pneumatic or CO2 guns, the barrel length is giving additional time for the air or gas to accelerate the projectile up to a certain point, and it's been experimented to see about where that is. But spring guns are unique. Rather than having a large volume of gas that's shoving the projectile forward, the combustion or compression in this compression tube really resembles more of a tiny explosion. And it has a lot of force initially that shoves the pellet down the barrel, but very soon after that, it starts to actually slow down because of the resistance of the barrel. The quantity of gas released is not like in a CO2 or a PCP or pneumatic gun. There's not a whole bunch of gas pushing out the end of the barrel. And typically within the first six to 10 inches, the gas pressure has done its thing. And at that point, friction will actually start slowing down our pellet. So anyway, that's part of how this thing got chopped up, but uh, since it's already in the state that it is, it will make a good example, and we will go ahead and try out the Air Venturi Rail Lock Spring Compressor. Okay, the first thing the instructions tell us to do is to remove the action from the spring gun stock. And we can go ahead and do that on the gammo here. Most gammos that I've worked with are this way. You've got a screw here on both sides that secure it into the stock. And it looks like, yes, these are indeed torque screws. And then we'll have one under there that you can see that um, we go in through the trigger guard and loosen. So the first thing we need to do is get out a torque bit that looks like the right size. I'm thinking we're good right about here. And this is a T20. Let's see if that thing fits. Oh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, let's give that a spin and see. Yep. we got it loose. Let's go ahead and get this guy loose.
Okay. That guy's free. I think these are free. Yep. Go ahead and there we go. Push those out so I don't lose track of them. Two short ones up front and a larger one in back. All right. Now, as you can see, we have the power plant from our spring gun out. And the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and get prepare it to connect the spring compressor. Most of these guns are going to have some kind of plastic end cap over the back of this tube. Nine times out of ten, that just slides off as this one did. This is the portion that we're going to use the compressor to help us hold and then recompress. And what happens on this is we'll put the device on here. We'll go ahead and tighten this against it, putting some pressure on it. And that will allow us to knock out this pin. And then once that pin's removed, we can go ahead and take the pressure off and get the spring relaxed and pull it out of this gun. So, next thing we're going to do is attach our rail lock. We both need to adjust it so that we have the proper location with regards to the back of that spring. And we have an adjustment on the tool that we can do that with. And we also, of course, need to lock it down to this scope rail. And um, that's what will hang on to this for us. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. Okay, now we've gone ahead and put it on the power plant here. And in order to do that, we first loosened the rear screw, they call it the rail lock screw. Loosen that just slightly. If you turn it too far, you'll end up losing this piece and having to put it back together again. And then loosen the front screw a great deal so that we could get these two pieces right here to slide down into the scope groove. And they say that you want this as far to the rear as possible with both of these. This is the portion that has the um, piece that, that goes into the groove. Uh, you want this piece fully mounted. Now this is a pretty short action, so I think we've got plenty of room to do what we need to, even though I'm not quite all the way back as far as I could be. The other thing we need to do we have this screw loose so that we can properly align that so that we're centered and we'll distribute the force properly. Once we get that set, we can go ahead and lock it down with this screw. And that looks pretty good right there. Um, go ahead and tighten that. Of course, we need to make sure we're good and tight up here. And, um, yes, we are. That's one there pretty good. We're still relatively straight. Yes, we are. So the next thing we're going to do here is go ahead and use this key as a handle to turn our compressor and line it up against that end cap and hopefully begin to ease that thing in a bit. Yeah, it looks like we are. And that should allow us to push that pin through pretty easily. I should be using a wooden block for all of this, but in the middle of recording, I am not come up with enough hands to do that. Thank you. Go ahead and pull that out. Very good. Now, as you can see, cross pin is out and the spring tension is being held by our compressor. 
Okay, well, we did get this pin out. Um, I had forgotten here, just real quickly. There was a plastic piece that sits between this trigger unit and this stud that held the screw to the stock. Um, slip the plastic piece off. That will allow you to go ahead and get a wrench on there. I used a 7 16 wrench to go ahead and loosen that, pull it out. That is the third point of retention for this end cap, which we now have loose. And we can go ahead and start relaxing the tension on. So, as we see, we have um, this plastic end cap that is starting to come out of the action. And, oops, got my handle stuck there. I need to watch so that we don't walk up over above it. This tube is a little on the short side for this compressor. But this seems to be working okay. Um, feels like there's actually a bit of tension on it. So I'll go ahead and keep working it free here. Just holding everything down so that nothing gets out of alignment. Of course there you can see where that cap was retained. To be honest, in a little gun like the Recon, I'm not really sure how much preload is on this. Um, feels pretty stiff right now. So I'm expecting we have a ways to go before it's actually relaxed. And there we go. At the point that we no longer have tension on it, and that's why I'm now you can actually see a little space there, we do have a quick release we can push down, allow us to adjust this piece, and we'll go ahead and pull it all the way back. And at this point, you can see we could go ahead and disassemble. Um, since I plan on putting this in right away, I'm not going to take the compressor off. Perhaps that'll be a good time to break. We'll cover the other part in the next video. Um, go ahead and see if we can't take a look at the um, spring piston on the other end of this. Go ahead, break it down a little further and reassemble it. But um, until then, as always, thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on another episode.